Hi everybody, this is Vijay Vardarajan. Once again, I'm back with a very interesting temple dish again. This is done on special occasions and marriages or some religious ceremonies when we do at home or the temple priests do it, offer to God, and then the devotees have a taste of this wonderful rice dish. It's a one pot, it's, it's just a single rice dish that doesn't need anything. It just can have some papads, some rice krispies and all, and you can enjoy this rice. This is something that you carry on travel, and um, when we travel in trains, we have these containers, one above the other, which we call as a tiffin set in stainless steel or brass which my grandmother used to make different rices, coconut rice, lime rice, tamarind rice, and curd rice. And then in another container, she'll keep a lot of broken puppets, roasted broken puppets. And we had a whale of a time in the train, enjoying our lunch. We used to have it for lunch, for dinner, everything, because it was a day travel to go from one city to the other when I was young. Today, everything is lightning speed, but in my days, Everything was sedately in that pace and we enjoyed every bit of it. Laughing and talking and looking out of the window because we used to have coal-based trains, trains that used coal. And that suit used to get in in the wind. And by the time we got out of the train and went back home, we had a blackened face and we had to go to the bathroom, restroom and then have a nice bath and then remove all that suit from our face. So this is the way our lives was those days. It's changed, of course, but we still continue with our tradition. We do these rices and enjoy them. We take them on picnics too, near the river. We sit there, we spread a nice sheet, and then have a nice chat, and then enjoy this lunch. Today, I'm going to do pulian jadam, puliyodara sadam, or tamarind rice. This is done predominantly in sesame oil, no other oil, because this gives the right taste to this dish. So in goes sesame oil, a little bit generous, maybe a ladle of it, and once it gets heated up, we add mustard, and then we add a little bit of chana dal, we add roasted peanuts with the skin, and then we add we tear and add dried red chilies. We add hing and we add the tamarind paste. We add a little water and then we allow it to simmer till the whole thing cooks well and becomes a sauce. And to this, we add the cooked rice and mix it all up. And you have the wonderful tamarind rice. Sesame oil is always smoky. It lets in a lot of smoke. So you think it's already heated up, but it takes some more time. When it's hot enough, as usual, I add the mustard. Only when it's hot enough, not before that. Okay. Here it goes. At the stage, I add a little bit of the Bengal gram or the chana dal. It turns a little golden brown, and then I add lots of this. You can add eight, 10. It all gets into the tangy taste, and it will not be spicy at all. Here, I'm tearing it up. Then I add this already roasted peanuts. It's getting into my nose and I'm going to sneeze right away. So <clears throat> let me add a little water and then I'll add the tamarind paste. turmeric powder, hing powder, 
and of course, let me use my hands, the salt. And at last, I've added this tamarind paste. We'll allow it to simmer for some time till it thickens a little bit. And then we are ready to mix it up with the cooked rice. For any South Indian rice-based dish, it doesn't have to be so grainy. It can be a little mushy too. But graininess, graininess is also good. We generally do it with pony rice. But uh, you can do it with basmati rice if you don't get pony rice. I will be adding a little jaggery in the end to give it a nice taste. So um, I'm going to open this up. It's done. I kept it in a medium flame, of course. And uh, I add a little jaggery to balance the taste of the salt, the tamarind, and the red chilies. So this gives a nice balance to the entire tamarind sauce. So this seems done at this stage. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to take the risk and add all the rice to this. I'm going to add it little by little because this might be too strong for that rice. So I will add later if I need to. Actually this sauce can also be had as a pickle for yogurt and rice. It tastes very good. There is one more type of tamarind paste that we do to add to the rice. That is done the Iyengar way. This is the Ayer way. This is much easier. They add sesame and various other things. They roast powder and add to the sauce. But this is just done plain and this is much easier. So you add the rice and uh, you allow it to soak, you mix it up well, allow it to soak for half an hour or one hour and then taste it. So here we go. I add all this rice to this. Actually you don't need the flame to be on, you can switch it off because the rice is cooked and the sauce is done. You just need to mix it up well. So that's all it needs. I am not going to add more sauce if I think this is right enough, the taste. I'm going to leave it at that and I can always add it to some more rice or I can use it as a pickle for yogurt and rice. So this one seems good to me. I will add a little crushed curry leaves and when it's hot enough, I add a little oil to the curry leaf so that the oil takes in the aroma of the curry leaf and gets mixed with the rice and it gives a delightful aroma to the entire dish. So this is actually over. Tamarind rice is something people wish to have almost every week. People do it quite often in their homes. People take this because this doesn't get spoiled. So they carry it on long journeys. They take it on picnics and uh, they enjoy themselves. Just eating tamarind rice morning, afternoon and night. That's how Tamilians are. Rice, rice and rice. Try this recipe and you will not go wrong because I've explained it in a very simple manner how to do it. And uh, if you have any doubts, please write in the comments below and I'm there to answer you any question that you ask. So this is Viji Vardrajan signing off until we meet again for an entire new recipe. Bye. Mm -hmm.